Hi, this is Dean Wedekin with MaxiLift, and again with another video in our series on pro tips dealing with the bucket elevator. Today's topic in particular is going to be the head section. Now, the importance of the head section, of course, is that you're getting product into the boot, it's coming up the trunking, it needs to get discharged properly. There's a number of features about the head section that are going to allow that to happen. First of all, the design of the head section needs to match the product that you're handling. And that can be different with different types of bucket elevators. The other important feature is going to be the drive system because the drive system has to be uh, designed and built also to match the product, match the capacity and the speed and those type of things. So let's look at each of these features in the head section. Now, most head sections are going to have two main parts of the physical part of the bucket elevator, and that is a bottom half and a top half. They're not necessarily true halves. The bottom half happens to be the part that's down below. Generally, the, the bearings are going to sit on there. The bridge tree is, is what you're going to have for all of the weight to sit on so that you've got uh, something to connect the trunking with the bucket elevator or the head section. So the bottom half is the heavy part. The top half is going to be oftentimes referred to as the bonnet and can be in two pieces. Oftentimes it's in two pieces, so it's easier to remove get access to the inside of the bucket elevator and be able to do maintenance. The bottom half again is going to be heavier because it has to take all the weight. Let's look at the type of weight that it's going to be carrying. We're going to, going to have to have a motor, a speed reducer. This particular design here in our display bucket elevator is a direct drive. We've got the motor and the speed reducer connected together and then a high speed coupling to connect that up with the head shaft and it goes through then the bearings into the uh, head, head pulley. But some, actually quite a few of the designs you're going to see out there are going to use a combination of V-belts and shivs to reduce the speed down to what you need to match what you have to have for your particular product. Now, in many cases, what you're going to need then is um, more opportunities, more places for guards because you don't want to have a chance to get, have, have someone get their hands in there and get them connected up and, and uh, with those V-belts and shivs. This drive system here is a lot more efficient in the sense that you only need to really have one guard in the drive system, and that is to cover this coupling so that you don't get your hands on that while it's spinning because the motor is coming right into the speed reducer and you don't have to have a guard to cover any V-belts right there. So that's an important feature. Many bucket elevators and a lot of other uh, power transmission uh, products are going to this type of drive system because then you don't have to have as many guards. Oftentimes in a situation like that, you have to make sure that the reducer is sized properly and that the reduction is the correct ratio so that you get the correct speed and you don't have to make any adjustments. But you could use a variable speed drive if your speed is off just slightly in order to get it to be just what you need. We'll talk about that in another video. So let's go inside that head section now. I talked about a head pulley. The head pulley in there is going to take a tremendous amount of weight. It has to be able to drive the, the belt, get those buckets to come up. It has to take all of that weight, has to take all of that torque. So it's going to be uh, made a lot more, a lot heavier than you might say the boot pulley. The hubs are heavier, the shaft is bigger, the bearings are bigger. But also that head pulley needs to be able to pull the belt around. And that being the case, you're going to need some traction on that head pulley to be able to get the belt to come around when that starts to spin. Um, this here happens to be easy lag. You can see the texture and the rubber material on here is going to help grip the belt so that that head pulley can, when it starts to spin, the belt's going to come along with it. The nice thing about easy lag is that it's going to come with a scored lines in the back so that it can be bent to the shape of your head pulley. This section here that I have has been pre-bent to match a particular diameter, but you can see that it just gets bent in those locations there and will fit right onto the head pulley. And it's a slide style lagging so that you can slide it in, you can slide it out when it wears out. It's important that this lagging in a grain and feed industry bucket elevator is also static conductive, oil resistant, and flame retardant. Now, you might not be able to tell just by looking at it because lagging that doesn't have those characteristics is going to look pretty much just the same. So it's important that you specify that when you place an order for this, that you're going to be putting it into a grain application, feed application, or any other, 
that might have an explosion hazard situation. I just was talking with a customer just the other day and they're handling uh, coal, uh, particles of coal. Now, obviously that's an explosive material as well when you have dust, coal dust in the atmosphere. So they're gonna need also static inductive and flame retardant type of lagging. Now that head pulley, once you've got the lagging on there, of course, it's gonna be able to pull the belt around. It's gonna do a great job there, but tracking is extremely important. And the head pulley is where you're gonna be able to get the tracking going of that belt. And what I'm talking about is the belt is coming around and you wanna make sure that it stays nice and straight in the trunking on the upside and also on the downside. So your head pulley needs to have a crown in the middle, it needs to have a slight uh, rise in the middle the crown generally needs to be about an eighth of an inch per foot of width. And that doesn't seem like very much, but it doesn't need to be very much. And so that's why that uh, you don't, you just go with that amount and it tends to keep that belt right there in the middle. Now, some people think that they maybe need more crown than that. And so you can get a pulley that's got what they call a high crown or super crown that would be a quarter of an inch per foot of uh, pulley width. That's generally not a problem, except for the fact that your belt has to also feel that same extra rise in the middle, and your buckets have to feel that as well. Now on a high capacity, large bucket elevator, you may end up with a, uh, a bucket as large as our Tiger Tough 24 by 10s. Now I happen to bring in here with me a Tiger Tough 9 by 5 bucket. If you look at the back side of that 9 by 5, it's got a 0.33 um, width on the back side, but a 24 by 10 Tiger Tough has three quarters of a width on the back side. And that means that if you have a pulley that just has one 24 by 10 and it has a high crown right in the middle, every time that comes around the pulley, it wants to flex the back side of your bucket, it puts a lot of strain on there. Now, the Tiger Tough bucket obviously revolutionized the industry because of the thickness of the front the sides and the back, and also especially in the corners. You want to have a good, heavy, thick bucket when you're handling lots of product and you want it to last a long time, but you're putting an awful lot of strain, even on that very tough bucket, to ask it to handle a high crown right in the middle of a 24 inch wide. Uh, one way to consider to um, eliminate that problem, if you're going to use a high crown pulley, would be to use two rows of 12 inch wide buckets so that both of them are sitting on either side of that high crown. It's just something to consider. It's another one of those things that you might ask us when you call and talk to us at MaxiLift about your application. We can certainly help you out with that. Now, other things to uh, consider with that uh, head section that we're talking about here is that um, when you're discharging out, it's very important that you get all of the product out. And um, that means that the throat plate needs to be in the right position and the throat plate needs to come right up close to the edge of the bucket so that as the bucket comes around and discharges that the throat plate comes as close as possible so that you don't get product coming back down. The speed is going to be very important because if you don't have the correct speed product may go too far and get discharged too early. If it gets charged, discharged too early sometimes it'll fly straight up and come back down. If it discharges too slowly maybe the product won't come out in time and it may come back down on the downside. There's a lot of things to consider with the head section. Uh, you may have questions, is yours designed properly? Maybe I've got a problem with the discharge in my head section um, or other things like that. Maybe it's wearing out more quickly or you've got problems with the drive system. We'd be glad to talk to you about that. Why don't you give us a call? Let us talk things over. This is Dean with MaxiLift and Pro Tips. Thanks for watching.